Hey everybody. Today we're doing some goodness of fit testing using R. We're going to work through a couple of problems. Here they are. This first one will look familiar if you've seen my introductory video on goodness of fit testing, where I work through some of the basic ideas behind that test. If you haven't seen that video or you're not familiar with the idea of goodness of fit testing, you probably want to watch that one first. I'll throw a link up top. A college reports that 50% of students in its stats classes are freshmen, 30% are sophomores, 10% are juniors, and 10% are seniors. A simple random sample of 65 such students has this breakdown. Um, this does not work out exactly to 50%, 30%, 10%, and 10%. But does that constitute good evidence that the college's percentages are wrong? Or are those differences potentially just due to random variability in our sample? So let's swap over to R and run the goodness of fit test there. Here I've already pulled up the um, help file for the relevant function, chi-square.test. One warning at the, um, at the outset, the chi-square.test function has several uses um, for, that runs several different chi-square tests. And so there's potentially a lot more underneath the hood here than we're gonna use in this video. We're gonna restrict our attention just to goodness of fit testing here. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is to input our data. So let's pick a variable name. How about maybe years? And let's make a vector just out of the data that we have. The numbers were 28, 24, 9, and 4. Next, we need to make a, ver a vector out of the proportions that we would expect under the null hypothesis. In this case, the null hypothesis is the, the college's um, claim is in fact true that 50% of the students in the stats classes are freshmen, 30% are sophomores, and so on. Let's call that um, props for proportions. So 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. The basic syntax for a chi-squared test in R is really very simple. It's just chi-square.test then the vector that is encoding the data that you have, and then p equals the vector that encodes the proportions that you are expecting under the null hypothesis. By the way, that p equals does matter here. If you don't have the p equals props, um, R will interpret the um, inputs differently and will run a different chi-squared test on it. So in this case, R is reminding us that we have three degrees of freedom corresponding to the four categories that we have, a chi-squared test statistic of 3.58, and a p-value of 0.31. Um, these are all the same numbers that we got in the introductory video on chi-squared testing for goodness of fit. In this case, we have a p-value that's um, pretty high, so this data does not cons constitute sufficient evidence um, for us to reject the null hypothesis. We um, do not have good evidence against the college's claim that 50% of its stat students are freshmen and so on down the line. Problem two, 200 rolls of a die result in this distribution, 28 ones, 32s, and so on. Does this constitute evidence that the die is unfair? So obviously if it's a fair die, which would be our null hypothesis, we would expect all of these numbers to be about equal to 200 divided by 6. And as we look at this data, that doesn't really seem to be the case. In particular, I notice a lot of 6s. Um, however, is that um, difference going to be statistically significant? So again, let's go over to R and do exactly the same process that we did a minute ago. Um, first, we want to encode the data that we have. So how about counts for this? And um, the values that we got are 28, 30, 22, 31, 38, and 51. Checking my work to make sure I've input all of this correctly. Great. So um, we could, again, encode a vector of probabilities. But since our null hypothesis is going to correspond to the idea that all the probabilities are the same, we can actually leave out that argument in this case. Chi-square.test, parenthesis, counts will be sufficient. So we have five degrees of freedom because of the six categories. Um, a chi-squared test statistic of 
and a p-value of 0 0.009463. A very small p-value, so um, that will certainly be sufficient evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that in fact this dye does appear to be weighted.